this is what an Excel workbook looks like when you first open it up. Uh, in the first chapter, we're going to be dealing with creating a worksheet and an embedded chart. Before we actually do anything here, this is sort of an introduction. There's two things you should be aware of. Before you actually create a worksheet, you need a requirements document, and that's on EX3, and it consists of of a need statement, source of data, summary of calculations, and any other special requirements that you may need on your worksheet. The other thing you should know is there is a worksheet development lifecycle, and this is on EX4, and includes analyzing requirements, design a solution, validate design, implement design, test solution, and document solution. Uh, this will, by the way, be on the exam, so both these things will be on the exam, so make sure you know them. Also, by the way, on EX4 and EX5, there's a nice little plan ahead for project guidelines. You might want to use this when you actually create your worksheets or actually, actually do a big project, so make sure you look at, that, uh, look at that as well. When you look at a workbook, when you first open it up, it consists of a workbook, of course, this up here should be familiar by now. The different uh, tab menus are available to you. We'll be mostly working with home and we'll be working with formulas. We won't be working as much with the other things, but we will take a look at them. Also, there are individual sheets here at the bottom that are part of a workbook. It's basically like a notebook with individual sheets within it. You have sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, and you can add sheets as you want. Some of the more important things to look at is these are columns and across these are rows. We will be dealing with column and rows exclusively, especially on this first assignment. These individual areas here are known as cells and these are where you actually enter points of data. Points of data can include numbers and they can also include text. Columns are actually annotated with the alphabet and if you continue to go on to the right and you can play and go on to the right and see the different columns they actually continue to go, go all the way to Z and then AA, AB, AC, AD, etc. On the other hand the rows actually delineated with numbers and you can continue to go down you can see how it continues to go on and on and on as far as numbers an interesting thing to do would, would be to see how far to the right the rows do, the columns go, and how far down the rows go. That would be an interesting thing to look at if you would like. Each individual cell has its own address. For example, this one right here would be A2. If you went down, that would be A3. Here's the actual address of the cell. Here would be B3, B4, etc. The actual lines that appear delineating the cells are known as grid lines. Looking at the menu tabs, we're basically going to deal, we're going to deal with the Home tab, we're going to deal with the Insert tab, and we're also going to deal with the Formulas tab. We're not going to deal too much with the other tabs at this point. On the next videos, we'll actually talk about each tab individually and what you can do with them, and we'll also be looking at how to insert an actual chart, how to manipulate individual cells, how to color cells, how to manipulate individual data points. So we'll be looking at uh, during the course of the videos. So in, in this, as far as Excel goes, we will be doing charts, we, do, we will be doing formulas, we will be adding sheets, we will be adding rows and columns, and we'll be doing some other stuff as well. So be prepared. More video later.